Hi, I'm Eddie of Eddie's Reef Aquaria. Today's weekly video is on a topic that I haven't touched for quite a while and I haven't had this issue for many, many years, but I got it, cyanobacteria. I'm gonna talk about it. I'm gonna talk about uh, what it actually is and how to tackle it, how to get rid of it. You've noticed that the lights are dim and there's a reason why, which I'll go into the video when it comes to certain colors, the channels, they have to be brought down. But I'll go into it uh, now as we go into the video. I haven't cleaned it. I could have cleaned it before doing the actual shot, but I haven't done that. So I'm gonna now start the video with a close-up shot so you actually see how it looks and I'm gonna ramp up the lights so you can see it better. So let's take a deep dive into this uh, very famous and very controversial topic, cyanobacteria. Hold on one second. Okay, so here we are in front of the tank. Uh, focus, of course, at the substrate, but you actually can see a couple of corals. Okay, first thing I wanna get across is what is actually cyanobacteria? Well, cyanobacteria, actually, it's a single cell bacteria also known as red slime or blue-green algae. So although it's called, like I just mentioned right now, red slime or blue-green algae, it's actually a bacteria. Now, what causes cyanobacteria? Well, mainly, mainly, the mainly topic, I would say nutrients. It's actually a nutrient problem. Um, uh, I would say like an import and export of the nutrients. In other words, an imbalance of the import versus the, ex the export of nutrients. In other words, overfeeding. So before I go uh, any further, let me elaborate on this. Overfeeding can be not necessarily overfeeding the uh, fish, um, you know, with, like in my case, I use PE pellets. Uh, I also use frozen foods. And I used to put them uh, daily. So like, let's say Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, I would feed my fish PE pellets. And then the alternating days, I would feed the frozen foods. But I did notice that the nitrates had gone, had been uh, elevated to 10 parts. Now, 10 parts is safe because, as you must be aware, if you follow me, I'm starting to get into the big boys club, which is, you know, agros. And to keep agros, you do need a little bit of phosphates and a little bit of nitrates. But you have to take into consideration that you're adding these nutrients. So you have to have the same balance of export or maybe a little more exports. Because if you don't have that, then that's what you're looking at happens. Your nutrient levels go up. You're importing more than what you're exporting. And then what happens is your nitrates go up a little higher your phosphates, which I had them at 0.125, was a little high, so this is the end result. Now, also, uh, when it comes to nutrients, not necessarily fish, but also corals. Uh, if you overdose it, like if you start to dose, like I've been dosing refroids, and also I've been dosing replenished, by, and also I've been dosing amino acids, coral aminos, by Brightwell. Okay, on that aspect of the coral, that's too much nutrients. This is what actually basically causes cyanobacteria. Now I'm going to uh, touch the topic of how to tackle it. Well, the preferred method to tackle it, it is more on the export nutrients, as you must be aware by what I just explained. Thus, more frequent water changes would be number one. Uh, what I would do, I mean, after I finish this video, I'm going to go ahead. Uh, matter of fact, I, I changed salts. Now I'm using Tropic Marin Pro. 
I'll bring up a video on it on the results. This is the first time I'm going to use it, so I don't have too much specs about it. But again, knowing me, Eddie, the researcher, I researched it, and it is one of the top uh, salts out there. Not that Red Sea Pro is not bad. It's excellent, but this salt is a pharmaceutical grade. So I'm going to try it because to eliminate this imbalance of import-export, number one, you should do a lot of water changes. That's the first thing that you should do, which I already did uh, some of it, but I'm going to do more. Now, when performing the water changes, some people say, well, siphoning the substrate to take out the bacteria. Well, that really has been found out to be that it is not as effective as one would think. Before, the old school of thought was, yeah, as you make more frequent water changes, siphon it out. Really, it doesn't work. I uh, used to do water changes on this Nubo 40 once a month. Then I went down to once every three weeks. Then now I went down to one uh, once every two weeks. And now with uh, cyano, I've been doing it like let's say once a week. I disturb the sand, I siphon it, and trust me, after I say a few hours, it's back there. Now, talking about that, let's, let's talk about lighting. Now, if you have a lighting system that you that is controllable, that you can control the separate light channels, which in this case, of course, I have a Radeon XR15 Pro, fourth generation, then what you should do, which is recommended, again, after another little research and talking to a couple of people, is that you should lower your whites, your reds, and your greens. The whites, reds, and greens will actually stimulate the actual growth of this bacteria because this bacteria lives not only on, on the nutrients, the high nutrients, but also it's photosynthetic. It also lives on lights. So what you got to do, which is when I did my intro, you notice, as I explained briefly, my lights were down. Now, what you're looking at uh, now, uh, I do not have it at, at 14K. I, I bring it down. Uh, but the whites, I lowered them to only 4%, the reds to 4%, and the greens to 4%. Now, I took a screenshot of the, of the program, how it looks, which I'll show you briefly. Now, going on, another... Uh, way to tackle it, to remedy, is by adding carbon, and of course, as I started to mention before, GFO. Carbon and GFO would definitely uh, be beneficial of removing the bacteria. Carbon will actually take out, you know, like let's say, the organics will uh, make your water crystal clear, and then GFO actually does take out uh, nitrates and phosphates. So uh, that definitely will remedy and will bring down and remove the cyanobacteria. Now, finally, before I close this video, there's a product that if you've been out there for a while and you've asked, you probably know about it. It's called ChemiClean. Now, ChemiClean, the old school, uh, sometimes it, it was used. And yes, it will get rid of it like let's say in 24 to 48 hours. After it, then, I mean, your protein skimmer will go crazy skimming it out. And then you have to do at least a 20% water change to get rid of the chemical uh, out of the water. Now, uh, that to me would be like the last result. But the new school of thinking when it comes to cyanobacteria is to do the constant water changes uh, to use the product that you, you've probably seen the picture of it. It's, uh, it's called Microbacter Clean. It's um, bacteria, not, not only beneficial bacteria, but it has other components that also cleans uh, your rocks, your um, substrate from issues like, like this. 
So I started to use that. I'm going to make more constant water changes, and that should actually get rid of it when it comes to the cyanobacteria. Well, and there you have it. I hope uh, you found this uh, video educational when it comes to cyanobacteria. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and take the proper procedures. Now when I finish the video, I'm going to go ahead and then I'm going to clean the substrate and I'm going to go ahead and do the water changes plus the product that I was telling you about that I, I shot a, a picture of it. Uh, that's a very excellent product in combination with the constant water changes that I'll be performing until I, I get rid of it. And as I said before, to recap, uh, ChemiClean is supposed to be the last resort. The new school of thought, I'm reiterating now, but it's very important that uh, you should do it the natural way, not um, putting all these chemicals in the tank and all that. Uh, that's one of the reasons why I haven't been able to buy any other corals because the water now, when it comes to nutrients, it's a little imbalanced. So since I have that instability of the tank, it'd be unwise for me to buy corals, place them, and then I have issues. So I hope you uh, liked the video. If you did, hit the thumbs up. And right next to it, there's a little bell. Hit that, that's the notification bell. So every time I upload a video, you'll be the first ones to be notified that Eddie's Reef of Korea uploaded a video. And like I say at the end of all of my videos, happy reefing. Thank you very much for watching this video and have a great, fantastic day. Bye-bye.